In the book of Psalms, God said, be still and know that I am God. That's what we're gonna do right now. And I believe as we do it, I believe the outcome is gonna be power in your life, in your home. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that as we're still, as we study, as we meditate on your word, we know you and we know your power flowing in our lives. We believe we receive all that you have for us in this segment. In Jesus' name, amen. Connected part two. This is going to be life-changing, I believe, because it comes from God's word and God's word never returns empty, never returns void. It's life-changing. Always, when we connect our faith with God's word, it's life-changing. I want you to see the essence of where we're going in this segment right from the start. 1 John 3 verse 1. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are, exclamation. This is why praying our Father which art in heaven is so powerful because connected to Jesus, we have the rights, the privileges, and power. Yes, that's the end game here as we discuss being connected. Connected. To be truly connected is to have power, outcome. Lights go on. The light goes on. Now, you can get various forms of lesser power, of course. Having money and influence is a form of power, but there have been many extremely wealthy people throughout history that have died young, powerless, powerless to heal themselves. You can be powerful physically, but even the strongest armies have vulnerabilities that can bring a nation to its knees with one single event. In review, we learn from part one that you are made to be light, not just to have light, but to be light, your identity. As a child of God, you are therefore a child of light. Ephesians 5.8 tells us that. It's true identity, my friend. Why is the world trying to sell everyone on getting lit? Designer identity. Because the strategy of all evil is to keep you from your true identity. That's right. Your identity is a threat to what's evil. You being connected to God the Father, the power source of life, makes you highly dangerous to the enemy. Yes, you're made to be light, not lit, light. Power up, never quit. Light, not lit. Power up, never quit. A strong arm, not an armpit. <laughs> Speaking of which, wearing underarm deodorant is just a practical tip for being connected little tip there for you. When you're connected to the power source, light defeats darkness 100% of the time. Light brings answers and exposes the enemy. Light connects you to the right people while protecting you from lies and flattery. The wrong people. Light represents true power, joy, peace, and freedom. Yes, it persuades others. This series entitled Connected is just right for you because you are light and as a child of God, you're designed for ultimate connection. Not fraud connection, but God connection. As with anything authentic, there are counterfeits meant to deceive, distract, and dilute. Jesus said, knowing the truth sets us free. It sets you free from bad connections so that you can be in good connections, family connections, family of God connections. This is so vitally important to all of us. You cannot be connected to what's wrong and also to what's right, what's fraudulent and what's authentic. Jesus said it this way. Look at what he said in Luke 6, verse 13. No servant is able to serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot, cannot serve God and mammon, riches, or anything in which you trust and on which you rely. This is Jesus talking. He knows what he's talking about. And unfortunately, there is this twisted doctrine of tolerance that has crept into hybrid versions of Christianity, putting forth the idea of tolerance as an expression of love. Anyone with an ounce of deductive reasoning can see that's just foolishness. What loving parent tolerates a pedophile teaching or caring for their child? 
Part of truly loving someone is not tolerating an abuser, stealing, destroying, or killing them. Part of understanding the art of being connected is realizing the evil you tolerate, you can never change. And eventually, you become complicit in. Get excited because this is for you. As I mentioned in part one, this series will address this. Number one, the powerlessness that you feel. God doesn't want that for you. He wants you powerful. Secondly, connected will address the questions in your life that need answers from God. Number three, connected will address your need for joy that you live with day after day. We all need joy. And number four, this series is going to address the lonely that you suffer from that leads to bad decisions. Lonely always will promote bad decisions. And number five, this series is going to give all of us practical steps to live connected, directed, and protected, right? So let me give you that picture once again from segment one. Here we go, right? Here's your design. And no matter how perfect you are, look at all oh, perfect, so smooth, it just looks right. But no matter how perfect you are, you must be submitted, you must rest in, you must be submitted to authentic power, and then you fulfill your destiny, you light up from the inside out, not from the outside in, but from the inside out, when you submit by turning into, remember, turning into, into the power source of all life. Let there be light. Oh, that's good. Jesus said this in his Sermon on the Mount, famous Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, verse 3. He said, blessed, happy, with life, joy, and salvation are the poor in spirit, the humble, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To be poor in spirit is to realize that you have no power in your design until you submit, until you turn into God, until you humble yourself and receive his power. We all need God's kingdom power. Then we're blessed. We light up. Our design lights up. This is a day to remember because as you submit to God's power, everything, everything can change in your life. If you've been cut or deeply scarred by bad connections, even family connections, this is a new day for you. All things are possible. God's word says that all things are possible. God restores, he reforms, he redeems. He doesn't replace you, but he redeems you. Ephesians 1 verse 5 says this, For God foreordained us, planned in love for us to be adopted as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it was his kind intent. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Jesus is the Redeemer, working God's redemption plan for you, in you, for all of us. You were never made to be disconnected outside, not working, without power. No, no, no. God's always had you on his mind, you, and adopting you into his great family as his child. God deeply cares about you, my friend, and any hurt that you might have endured. He has great plans for you, but he knows you. In God's family, nobody is fatherless or motherless. God has connected you. He's got family connections for you. God meets your needs abundantly. He puts the isolated in family. That's what Psalm 68 verse 5 says. God puts the isolated in families. God is a father to the fatherless. And then verse 6, he puts the isolated in families. God has always destined you to be in his family connected. Not in name only, but in reality. Some of us have a bad taste in our conscious minds for the idea of family. It's because of the hurts, the rejections, the abuse. But God can heal us, and he must, because family is his end goal for each one of us. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Family is critical. This is why we must fully know God's version of family, a true brother, and a, what a true fool is.
Just because the devil hijacks a plane and uses it for destruction doesn't mean that that was the original purpose of the design, right? You understand that? We all know that planes have transported sick people to medical care, lifted enslaved people to freedom, carried orphans to a loving family for adoption. God has always intended you to be in his family for the purpose of life. Blessing, great joy. Ephesians 3, starting at verse 14 says this, I love it. I bow my knee under the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he, that's God, would grant me according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with his might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in us. See, notice the word in. When God's spirit is in you, then you are strengthened with might. God wants you in the family and he wants his power in you. Yes, the top priority is you in God's family, strengthened by the riches of his glory. In Christ, you enjoy the family name. That's beautiful. And all the family benefits. That's wonderful. I believe this is why enemy number one for the devil is family. He hates family. He wants to redefine family to be the most offensive thing for humans so they run from God's plan for blessing. Billy Graham once said this, the moral foundation of our country is in danger of crumbling as families break up and parents neglect their responsibilities. Investing time in family is precious. Going to baseball games and dance recitals Hey, that's great, that's wonderful, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't replace the study of and knowing the truth, God's truth. So why does the devil so despise the concept of family? You were created by God in the image of God for the purpose of being in family with God. Now that is the apex of being connected. We're talking about being connected. That's the apex of being connected in family with God. If you don't know this, understand this, then you are easy prey for any scam to rob your identity. Look how broken homes in the city feed their children into street gangs. They want family. Look how criminal minds gravitate toward a godfather. They want family. Even cryptocurrency geeks like the FDX, corporation defrauding billions of dollars from the investors, they also had their own twisted version of family with all of their co-conspirators. The money was a means to create family because family for them means identity. To rob your identity is the ultimate goal of Satan. He hates you because your design points to God. So to have you in agreement with him is to be an enemy of God and his version of a win. It disconnects a person from life, from eternal purpose, peace, and results in eternal death. Jesus came specifically, did you know this? To destroy that exact identity scam. Remember at the beginning, I read this, 1 John 3 verse 1. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. In Christ Jesus, we are called and counted as children of God. That's amazing. That's amazing. The order of your life is to be connected. Ultimately, that's family. God's version of family, connected. That order is like, it's like a shelf. It's like a shelf system. Take a look at this three-step ladder and think of these steps as shelves, shelves to your life. It's simple, but as the great 19th century general, Carl von Clausewitz wrote in his book on war, he said, simple, but the simple things are difficult. Have you ever noticed when things are truly simple, the simple being difficult, that the world tries to desperately make that thing complex, exaggerated, flamboyant, so as to suddenly make it easy, comfortable, and not difficult. Something as simple as gender, they make it complex. How about morality? It's simple, just difficult. What about character? Again, simple, but difficult. Then there's Bible ethics. Simple, just difficult. Look again at family, simple, 
just difficult. God's version anyway. Instead of admitting we need a savior, God's help, we choose to complicate things, add glitter, make it multiple choice, because anything binary is just too simple and therefore difficult, if not impossible. Real life, love, liberty is simple. It's just difficult. It's difficult, even impossible, because here's a news flash for you. We're all born in a fallen state, born in sin. That means doing what's right, moral and good, is downright impossible without being reformed, reborn on the inside. We're out of order. Our shelves, our shelves, they need help. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3 that unless he was born again, he couldn't even see the kingdom of God. That's the power source for life, love and liberty. The thing that lights you up, the light isn't lit. The thing that lights you up is God's order, God's kingdom. Jesus said we must be born again of the spirit. Why? Because otherwise getting the order of your shelf right will be impossible. You can't save you. So look at your life here. Look at your life like these shelves, right? You were born, even if you were orphaned, people were involved. We had people involved. So we got people getting involved. Maybe that came in as top priority. There's this human connection. The other thing that you have on your shelf from birth is stuff. We all have got stuff, right? Anything that's a thing, air, food, water, housing, clothes, dirt, even your skin, stuff. There's people, and then there's things, stuff. You were born with both, but still no light. It doesn't light you up. These two entities in life, they sort of bounce around priority-wise. Sometimes we, we get the people down here, we get the stuff up here. Sometimes the people fall way down here. We have the stuff way up here, and then the order changes around. But as you notice, we still haven't got lit up. The light doesn't come on. Why is it? These two entities in life, they sort of bounce around, but we don't get, depending on our experiences, our training, the lack of training, our trust, our broken trust, discipleship, our discipline, our abuse, it all affects our shelf order. You were born with a need for people and stuff, things, but notice we got three shelves here. We have three basic shelves to your life. You need all three of these shelves filled. There's an order of importance also, but all three need to be filled for life here on earth. You were born with the two entities. You had access to people, even if they were abusive people, but you had the people and you had the stuff here on earth. Without consciously knowing it, we're trying to get the light on, all of us. We're just trying to get the light on. Maybe if we had more stuff, more, more money, more cars, more career. Maybe if we had more education, that's stuff, right? If we could just somehow, maybe it's the people. Maybe we married a good person, but, but maybe we needed a better person. So we divorced that person and we got another person, maybe somebody better, we think, replacing that person with the other person, but still no light. Why? Because you were born desperately needing that third shelf, that top shelf satisfied to really be connected, to finally have light. Still no light. So what's missing? What's missing in our life? Well, I mean, we, we need the shelves all filled. We can see that, but we also have to have the right order. What's the right order? We need a God order here. What's missing? So we put this down here. We still, the light's still not on. We get people maybe down here. We get the stuff down there underneath the people. And then we still have to finish the top shelf and we put it up here and there's light, the source of all life, of family. We're born with a need for God to light us up and not just to be anywhere. God's got to be first in our life, top shelf. That requires a knowing of God, a conscious understanding that he is standing at the door of our life, our heart knocking to come in. And if we don't let God in, we instinctively work to fill the number one position. The moment we take him off, the light goes out. 
And maybe we've we said, well, I got God in my life, but maybe we got the stuff as number one. Maybe the stuff is taking the place even over the people. No, she's not the one lighting my life up. So maybe I'll divorce her and move on quickly to somebody else. Maybe it's success I need. Maybe I just need more education. Maybe that's the right thing, right? Maybe it's fame or a bigger house or both. Though I got God in my life, but I just need a bigger house, a better career. Maybe I just need a better feeling. Just one more drink, one more high, one more night. Then I'll, I'll feel like my life is lighting up. But you can see, even with God in the equation, my life's still a mess. It's not lighting up. Until we get God back in first place, we just can't get that satisfaction. I put the stuff down here below the people and I put God in his place and there is light. Without God in first place, there's no power. We can't get the order even right in our life. But when God is at the top, number one, he directs an order for your life that finally, finally turns on your power source for light. Yes, light be. There's no substitute for number one. God gives you courage, direction to get the next shelf right. We need help with, even with our people relationships, but God orchestrates that for us. He does it for us. You know, the first connection in life's order isn't religion. It's not buildings, cathedrals. It's not denominations or organizations. It's relationship with God. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's what we read in Ephesians. It's simple, yet it's just difficult. That's why God did it for us through Jesus Christ. We couldn't do this. We couldn't get this order right. God's family is simple, and yet impossible without a mediator, a savior, Jesus. So either we let God build the house or we complicate things. We try in vain and run ourselves into destruction. Think of it. We need all three shelves filled for life here on earth. We need just the top shelf for life after this life. Top priority, top shelf, number one connection. We all need God. You know, some people deceive themselves into believing that they have God in first place, but then they scratch their head when there's little to no light. Well, why? What's going on? While well, they say God is top shelf, but as life questions and decisions come up, they defer to their human side. Maybe it's my genetics, my DNA, my gender. Maybe it's my skin color, my age, my intellect, my accent, my background, my traditions, my preferences. You see, that's all human talk. And no matter how much a person says God is number one, their connected reality tells us God is not number one to them. If God is not number one in your life, then in your connected reality, he's not God. Therefore, your order will never work. The light will never turn on. Your light stays off. Your identity is compromised because you've made the word of God of no effect by your traditions, maybe your preferences, nationality, skin color, um, gender, a million other short-circuited substitutes for God. Only he can be number one and make your light work. Your identity light up. There it is. You're a spirit with a soul living in a body. In that order, God builds the house. Remember this, God builds the house, the life, the family. Without his influence, we get complex, substitute, and we labor toward utter destruction. It's simple and yet very difficult. That's why a connected life requires the Savior, Jesus. God says so. Now, this is why every connected life needs spiritual mentoring. It's, it's like spiritual parenting. Because God is all about family, spiritual parenting is critical to all of us. Being born again, but this time in the spirit, requires growing up in the spirit. So that means spiritual parenting, mentoring, advising is necessary. Paul the apostle was a spiritual father, a mentor and an instructor to Timothy. Listen to what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. 
He says, so you, my son, be strong inwardly. <laughs> See, we're talking about the inwardly, inwardly in the grace, spiritual blessing that is to be found only only in Christ Jesus. See, Paul is cautious not to try and control Timothy, but complement the God connection. He knows God's the source. Then verse two, and the instructions which you have heard from me, Paul says, along with many witnesses, transmit and entrust to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. The Bible also talks about great women in the Bible who were spiritual leaders directing and connecting. We all need to be properly connected. God's family is his design, making us all strategically connected. In fact, 1 Peter 2 verse 5 invites us to, it actually says, come and like living stones be built into a spiritual house. You see, that requires shaping, spiritual parenting, which is mentoring, coaching, advising, influencing, directing, even correcting. Why would you think that attendance to a man-made building is such a religious human pursuit? Because our going to a man-made building helps distract us from being God's building. Think about that. His workmanship being connected so our light actually shines forth. Having our faith built around man-made structures is so complicated, but it's easy to get the building lights on, right? On the other hand, only God can light up a human life. If you don't have a spiritual coach in your life, you need to pursue God's plan this week, right away. Aristotle, you know, the great Greek philosopher, he said, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. He was talking about the challenges of being educated, the, the challenges of really pursuing truth and a change of your thinking in your mind. Good spiritual mentoring isn't easy. If your priority is easy and entertaining, you'll find that getting your light connected to power never seems to happen. You stay in the dark. That's not what God wants for you. Norman Vincent Peale, the great motivator, pastor, and author, he said this, change your thoughts and you change your world. Well, obviously, thoughts for the better and a world for the better. That was Jesus' original sermon. Repent, which means change your mind, your way of thinking for the better. But that requires spiritual coaching, mentoring, spiritual parenting. It's simple, not easy, but it's powerful. Humanity evolves downward, not upward. It's the law of disintegration. We need God on that top shelf, and then his order moves us perfectly into being connected, connected in the family of God. Not doing connected, but being connected. Connection is direction, is protection. So allow me to conclude with this. One of my all-time favorite biographies in the Bible is the story of Rahab. She's often referred to as Rahab the prostitute or Rahab the harlot because of her situation. We first find her living and working in the lawless, corrupt city of Jericho, one of the worst in the world. She's trapped in life, in a life of prostitution, but she's an amazing young woman of faith. Can you believe this? She has this heroic heart that desires to help the children of Israel by becoming part of the spy operation that gives victory to God's people. So let me just give you the fast reality of Rahab's story. She's destined by the circumstances to be a statistic of sex slave trafficking. <laughs> but she hears about a God who sets slaves free and God's message of love changes her thinking from hopeless to hopeful. Her faith in God moves her to action and she gets connected to the right people. Her connection with God's family gets her saved from slavery, destruction, and death. Her connection with God's family gets her an amazing marriage, yes, to Solomon, one of the two spies that she helped shelter. Then her God family connection gets her a beautiful son, 
Boaz. That's right, she's the mother of Boaz who became this rich, famous, and great influential man in the kingdom, God's kingdom. Then she becomes the great grandmother of the most influential, amazing earthly king. That's right, David the psalmist. That's his grandmother, Rahab. And then Rahab, finally, she becomes the great, 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 great grandmother of the king of all eternity. His name is Jesus. Talk about being connected. Talk about power. When God is number one in your life, when he's on the number one shelf, then the impossible becomes possible. You go from a very complex life to a very powerfully focused, simple life of outcome. You see, my dear friend, no matter where you are in life, no matter where, no matter what you've done in life, no matter how hopeless, desperate, and lost you feel, God is your true source of being connected. And connection is your direction, is your protection. Just ask one of the greatest women in all of history with all of the odds stacked against her. Bless her heart. Just ask Rahab if being in God's family is a big deal or not. Oh my goodness. Connected. You need to be in God's family. Connected to his power, to his love and all that God provides for you. Disconnected from God's family. Rahab had the identity of a harlot, a prostitute in Jericho. But connected, connected to God's family, Rahab was 100% hero, 100% warrior girl, prominent wife, 100% amazing mom, a daughter of the Most High God. She is 100% royalty. Rahab is in heaven right now. I believe she's doing conferences. She's one of the foremost greatest speakers in heaven. I think Paul the Apostle, he goes to her events. I gotta, I gotta go hear Rahab talk. Don't you think it's time for you to be connected through Jesus in God's family? Listen to Ephesians 2.19. You are no longer outsiders and exiles, aliens without the rights of citizenship, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, God's people, and are members of God's household. Through Jesus Christ, you are a child of God, my friend. You're not an outsider, but an insider, part of his household. So all the rights and the privileges of his family, they're yours. Did you get that? It's what some people call refrigerator rights. See, kids don't ask to get in the fridge. They get refrigerator rights. They just indulge. God wants you to be his favorite child with refrigerator rights. I can't say it any better than this. In Christ Jesus, you belong. You belong. I didn't read it to you earlier, but now I just can't hold it back from you. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead by our own trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ connected. God makes you connected in his family. Let's pray together. Pray this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, today's the day I'm coming home. Home to the Father God's family. You paid the great price for me to ransom me from my sins. You died on the cross for me. Forgive me, restore me. Now connect me to the power of your love. In your great name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.